Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you today. Check these headlines out here. We got Protocol 18 by Stellar. And I got to tell you, it's reminded me of something that's a lot like Ripple is doing. We'll get into it. Bitstamp relisting XRP, but there is a catch. China and France in a CBDC race. Wait till you hear the numbers here. An XRP ledger halted. And we got so much more. Somebody rolled that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. $2.753 trillion market cap for crypto right now. New money's up in the house. And let's take a look at this. Bitcoin at $62,600 plus. Ethereum at $4,500 plus. Up plus 14% on the seven day. Solana, $241.69. 27.8% on 28% on the seven day. And we see Cardano back over two bucks at 205 right now, 6.64 on the seven day. XRP up 22% on the seven day plus, and $1.23. It's had a hell of a day today. I'm coming to you right now. It is the middle of the night. You'll hear this in just a couple hours when I post a video, but I got, got a lot going on today. So I had to get up really in the middle of the night here and do this. Right now, we're sitting at 123 for XRP, ranging between 114. 1424 on the low side, 12539 on the high side. We know what to do. We just keep an eye out on what's going on here and see if we continue to fight to get up. Now look, 130, 150, you know what I'm really looking for? Get me over two dollars with XRP, and then I know there's no stopping this puppy where we're going. Let's get over two bucks and I'll be really, really happy. All right, so I think I just hit the mute button by accident. You got me? Okay, I think you guys can hear me now. Sorry about that. Looking right here, the news starts with XRP Crypto Wolf here. Interest in crypto is growing rapidly in India. A Hindu nationalist group wants to regulate crypto. We know, uh, honestly, India has been really like America here. I mean, just a bad tennis match watching all this unfold. But nevertheless, we've seen Coinbase get over there. They just recently acquired a firm to help do what they're going to do in India with crypto. And it is coming, but it has been hard to watch as it unfolds. But not nearly as hard to watch here is in the United States. But one, I live here. And two, I think India is actually ahead of where the United States is. So there's something to be said there too. Let's take a look at this because you're going to see some names here that show up all the time. And it's not a mistake, right? It's not a mistake. JP Morgan report says... Central bank digital currencies can save firms hundreds of hundred billions, right? Hundred billions a year in cross-border costs. Well, of course it can. This is not a shock to any of us, but this is where the narrative changes from, oh, it's for illicit activity. Oh, it's not really anything. You know, they use crypto to say that it's something brand new, but it really doesn't solve any problems. Yeah. Well, here we see that that was all talking their book. And the same goes for Goldman Sachs, right? Goldman Sachs is strengthening its tokenization efforts by partnering with blockchain startup digital asset. I, I Look, you know, all of this is nothing that we don't know. But for me, when I see this news and see the enormity of the players behind us, a Goldman, a JP Morgan, of course it's coming. You know, when, when moon, everyone asks, I don't ask when moon. When I, what I ask myself is, do these companies, do these investment banks, do they turn around at any point and say, you know, we're packing it up on crypto. We're, we're going to close down our operations on it. We're, we're not going to do any more of that, right? We never hear them say that because they, we know ultimately this is where the world is going. And you know that because these companies continue to pour billions into it because they know there's billions upon billions to be made. And here's even more effort here. The race to get the supremacy for central bank digital currency. France moves ahead of China in the battle for the CBDC supremacy. But wait till you see 
the numbers that China is putting up. We know that they've been out front with the central bank digital currency here. And take a look at this. China's CBDC has been used for $9.7 billion worth of transactions. $9.7 billion worth of transactions. Now, that's not exactly a corner store kind of numbers right there. You know, the pressure in my eyes, I have said this a lot. I've talked about it for years on this channel. Think of this. No, no one around the world wants to use an electronic digital yuan from China. We all know that, you know, communist China is exactly that. It's communist China. You don't want to run into the global reserve dollar ending up, ending up being something like the Chinese digital yuan, right? You don't, you're not going to want that, right? And I think that's a pretty uh, blanket, safe blanket statement that everybody understands. However, with that being said, you know, this also provides, as I've said years ago in this channel, business incentive, pressure. You know, you see the continued rollout. Let's take another shift here. Look at the, the, the Saudi Arabia rollout with uh, uh, RippleNet, right? And, and the use of XRP. And look at the, the rollout in, in the Southeast Asian region. And what do you see there? Whether it's Ripple or RippleNet, however, whether it's fiat to fiat or eventually going to XRP to settlement. Look at the pressure that's bringing itself to a head around the world in the different regions that already have clarity. What do you think that does to regulators? What do you think that does to government officials? It makes them realize that the clock is ticking. The, the chance to be the leader in the fourth industrial revolution is slipping from their grasp. And more importantly, the choice about where you sit in that race, whether you're first, middle, or last, is about to be decided for you. Because the more you sit here in idle, you know, back channels talking about this and talking about that and putting one more panel together to discuss this and not actually take action. It's not that hard to take action on this. I understand, oh, well, there's a lot of risk they have to worry about and, and the mitigation of risk because of this new technology. Well, look what the other countries that are ahead of you are already doing and look at what's working. And let's make the 80-20 rule. Let's agree to not do the 80% that didn't work for the other regions of the world. And let's agree to take the 20% that did work and do that 100% of the time. You know, it doesn't really get that complicated, you know, so and I understand. I mean, I'm, I know I'm being pretty lofty with the look at it. But the reality here is, is that the United States has to get in front of this. Now, with that being said, maybe we saw a glimmer of that. The president working group report, which has some pros and has some cons in it about stable coins, may have just set the tone for the USD coin to become the unofficial, I believe, the unofficial U.S. digital dollar for the United States of America. And I believe that that is possibly the unofficial status of what happened to Jeremy Allaire Circle and the USD coin, because they're about the only one that are a large enough player to be able to commit to the level of financial commitment and compliance and regulatory standards and all of those things that come with it in order to be a bank and to be able to hold measure with what, with what was suggested in the PWG, the President's Working Group report. But that, you know, is another point. Let's switch to this because this is very good news here from Mac Attack. Bitstamp is relisting XRP. Now, there is a catch. There is a catch. And the catch is that it's not for U.S. residents at this time. However, this is a quick look at the different pairings that were offered, and you can see XRP right down here at the bottom. But you know what? I said this in my tweet, and I should have pulled it, but this is how it starts. Don't believe it. It's still true. This is how it starts. Take a look at this, because I said it in the headlines. The XRP ledger halted today. How about that one? Yeah, the XRP ledger is back on track 
after a temporary halt. Let's take a look at this really quickly. Shout out to Wheat Say Win and David Schwartz here for the information. The XRP ledger was stopped or stopped processing transactions for about 15 minutes earlier today, which was on the third. This is the fourth. And according to developer Wheat Say Win, he says here the XRP ledger is working like it's supposed to. It looks like we dropped below quorum for a little while with four, dollar, four validators being down. No transactions have been lost, but ledgers have been closed for a little while. When below quorum, the XRP ledger chooses safety and it says here the update lasted not two minutes my original tweet but 15 minutes at the time of the tweeting because I have a decent monitoring and was warned straight away the counter was at two minutes uh, missing forward progress it says here Four validators down. This caused by a uh, cause a lot more by being down. It says every server in the protocol relies on its own UNL unique node list for validating new ledgers. The core requirement is set at 80%. If more than 20% of the validators cannot reach consensus or remain unavailable, the network is not able to confirm new transactions. Explain by when it says here four validators were down, which caused the quorum to drop below the required threshold. The average close time of the new ledger is about four seconds but validators were not capable of reaching an agreement which stopped transaction processing it goes on to say here down at the bottom if you go down to it it says here that uh, uh, finally your XRP is safe no history is lost XRP ledger is working I believe we need more proactive infrastructure operators CTO from Ripple David Schwartz supported implementing the negative UNL feature which ensures that networks can continue or the network can continue making forward progress even when several validators are down in this way transaction will continue being confirmed during a temporary outage says we need to get the negative UNL feature deployed. More validators is also good, but has some of its own trade-offs. Now, that's exciting about the negative UNL, where it can process transactions going forward, even with a temporary outage. I mean, I don't even know how to, exp I don't even know how to understand how that happened. Now, I do, I did talk about this, but stay with me here. Okay, because we're getting ready to look at some stellar information, and I think it really is starting to bring us to another conversation that we need to have, not just Ethereum. You know, when we look at the inconsistencies coming from the SEC, you know, really holding uh, Ripple and XRP itself to a hype bar all its own, certainly against Ethereum and what the unique advantage was there. But I have a question for the SEC. There is now going to be wrapped XRP on the Ethereum network. My question is, if XRP itself is a security, what does that make wrapped XRP on the Ethereum network? Is that not a security because that's your baby at the SEC? And we know that there's been a lot of people at the SEC, that have, or at least a couple people at the NSF or SEC formally, that have benefited from Ethereum success. How's that going to work out? How's that going to work out? You know, this gets interesting, the inconsistency here, inconsistencies here, but stay with me. There's good news for the Stellar Network has upgraded to what they call Protocol 18. We're already seeing ecosystem companies launch user interfaces leveraging AMM, automatic market making, I think is automated market makers uh, functionality, two examples. Now look here, this is Danelle Dixon, listen to her tell it. Now, why do we not have sound from her on this? What is going on here? One second. I don't know why we don't have sound from her. But you know what? Let me try it one more time. You know, I'll give it to you straight. So what she's talking about here is the fact that, and I don't know why we have sound, but nevertheless, we'll get through it. What she's talking about here is creating liquidity pools for XLM on their network. And what it sounds like is some sort of version or their version of a RippleNet 
in their own way, not exactly the way RippleNet is, and I'm being very macro here and overviewing of this, but it does seem like they're trying to set up these liquidity pools for automated market makers, automatic market makers, whatever you call it. And that appears to be what they're doing. Now, we do, I certainly believe that Ripple is slightly ahead of where Stellar is. But, you know, there's a question here again about the inconsistency from the SEC. We know that the unique advantage was given to Ethereum, but what about Stellar? Remember when they burned 55 billion tokens worth $4.7 billion? They didn't ask anybody, and it was done through the Stellar Development Foundation. They didn't ask anybody. They had complete control over it, and they went out there and burned 55 billion tokens. Now, isn't that a central entity controlling a network? How in the world is the SEC not suing Jed McCaleb and Stellar over XLM being a security? Let me ask another fancy question here. Let's take a look at this. How is it that the SEC has allowed co-founder Jed McCaleb to make a bunch of money while freezing the accounts of retail holders and their retirement accounts, like you and me, but allowed Jed McCaleb to sell XRP. And how is it that he was able to sell XRP and he doesn't get charged as Brad and Chris did? I understand that he didn't work at Ripple anymore, but the point is, is he sold it. And he sold damn near about the same amount, I believe, if my math is correct, give or take, of what Brad and Chris have done. How is it that he's not also being charged with selling a security? Even if you're not working there, you're selling a security, you're selling that much of it. You know, I don't understand it. There is some huge inconsistencies here, but the bigger question here is really for me about the 55 billion that got burned shows that they have total control over the network and the tokens. And I tell you, it just gets uglier and uglier when it comes to the SEC and the lack of clarity that they continue to provide with their own actions. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below. And remember, let's tag a senator in your district. Let's pick one. We're going to do this, you know, before the week's out, maybe early next week. We're going to pick one or a group or a committee and we're going to focus on them and instead of focus on, on the vastness of Congress and really start touching, you know, one or a committee and really get focused with it in all our efforts. That's what we're going to do. I hope you guys will join me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below. Share with somebody, you know. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. They are trusted, vetted links of products and services I use each and every day. I'll catch all of you on the next one.